and setting up and seeing the names as we were getting ready over these days. My heart moved in so many different directions. You know, just good, glad that we'll be back around this altar. So many of these people we're going to remember tonight, they're, they were buried right from here with, with funeral masses. And Deacon and I and that choir just welcomed us so beautifully we're a part of it. It's, it's good to be here. But it's hard to be here for, for some of you still, too. So just let all of that just kind of stir up tonight, and that's okay. I don't think God wants us to have it all together right now. He just wants us to be in his house. And we begin together in the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That funeral mass that you were a part of some time ago began with that sprinkling of holy water, right? Remembering that claiming of baptism. We just did that, right? With that sign of the cross. Thank God he claims us. He has claimed our loved ones. We're never worthy of that embrace. So we call to mind our sin. Lord, you descended into the place of the dead for our salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you came to save all sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you are the Savior of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord. And as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened, so may our hope of resurrection for your departed servants also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The, repro the reproach of his people he will remo remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we have looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we have looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. The psalm response is, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised, rise, raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. You know the author C.S. Lewis, The Chronicles of Narnia, maybe you recognize that, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Some of you are old enough you remember the cartoon versions on TV a long time ago, right? Some know the new movies that were out in theaters more recently. <clears throat> it's actually a contest he got into with J.R.R. Tolkien. You know what he was into, right? Hobbit, right? It was who could more creatively 
communicate some of the truths of the Christian faith through these kind of made-up words. So they set to work. These two friends, these two great Christians with very creative minds uh, came up with the Lord of the Rings and, 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 the, and the Chronicles of Narnia. Great, great stories that communicate to us kind of in a bigger picture some of the stories of, of our faith. So you kind of, it's obvious in Narnia, right? Now who's this lion who would lay down his life, you know? Who's this witch who thinks she has all this power until it's taken from her, right? Just a, a real sense of seeing that our Lord Jesus laying down his life. Of seeing, you know, the devil who thinks that, that, that uh, you know, there's a victory that is snatched, you know, in the resurrection, you know. So, let's talk about time in Narnia. You ever pay attention to that? When they first go through the back of the wardrobe and have this amazing adventure, they come back and it's like, what are you doing? Hide and seek, you're supposed to stay hidden. We've been gone for days. No, we I didn't even get to 100 yet. You just came out of the wardrobe, right? Huh. Time was different in Narnia than it was in, in England. I think there's something to be learned from that. Intentionally written into the story is how time is different. In fact, our, our bodies will be different. We heard that in the, in the gospel, right? That there are these dear friends of Jesus who have who've watched him and die, know that he's, he's dead, and, and their hopes are shattered, and they're walking downtrodden. And our Lord comes alongside, <clears throat> excuse me, our Lord comes alongside, joins them, explains how it had to be, why it had to be this way. It isn't until the breaking of the bread that their eyes are opened and they, they recognize it's him. So something's changed, something's different in his body. Uh, they they would have known him. But they didn't in that time. We maybe get a sense of it from our first reading we had, right? That what's this promise going to be? That the veil will be torn in two. That that which separates us from being able to see through the other side, it's going to be torn in two. What a great promise in the Old Testament. In fact, we see it, you know, acted out and played out at the death of, of Christ. The veil in the temple is, is torn. I think there's a times in our lives where we see through that veil. Maybe, maybe you've known that. Maybe you've known like that young kid, that three or four year old that says something, you're like, whoa, how would they know my mother's name? Right? Or how would they have said? I think as we're little, we're maybe more open to the sense of, yeah, I can see past this veil. But we do it enough times and get greeted by enough woes, we start to back off that, right? That I could see past and really be aware that there's a sign, a symbol, an action, an activity of someone who's gone before me is that close to me. Something about the way we process this world, we, we back off that. We, we, we pick the veil back up and say, I wish it wasn't torn. I, I'm, I'm comfortable not being able to, to see. But our Lord is torn. It. It's been torn. And I think another time in our life later on, we, we miss that. I'm confident there's stories in this room right now, tonight, in this church, that you'll be able to say, this happened. And it had to have been God at work. That happened. It was my loved one just letting me know things were okay. And suddenly we're not afraid that we can see through that veil again, that it's, that it's there, it's right there, just past our sight. So I think time is different. Uh, the way we see things are different. But there's a closeness that's, that's real. And our ability to connect them, if they have reached out back to us in some way to let us know things are good, they're thinking of us, that whatever it was for you, that coin you found, that cardinal that flew by, whatever it was, that scripture that popped up at the right time, an old letter, are we doing the same for them? That's what tonight is about. All souls. The church gives us a, a wonderful celebration on, on, on November 2nd to say, let's think about everyone who's, who's passed away in our lives, those who we, we know are are preparing for the big dance, right? Are, 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 are being, you know, cleaned up. It's like, it's like Jesus called them up and they got to the gate and said, oh, that looks fun. Hang on, let me just powder up a second, right? Maybe some of your loved ones, that was their way, right? Oh, I can't go with this old thing on. Let me just clean up, right? So, so there's a cleaning up and we are praying for them through that cleaning up. And any stain of sin would be just cleaned up. Well, how's... Any stain of sin cleaned off, but the sacrifice of Jesus. This is my body given up for you, represented here on this altar, where we just heard the gospel. The breaking of the bread is where the eyes were opened, where the veil was again torn and set down. Right. That's why we're here. 
That's why we're joining our prayers to the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass for our loved ones to be, to be welcomed quickly into that eternal banquet. Things can separate us, and they can be heavy for sure. Our own patroness, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, knew that, right? Knew the loss of her own mother, knew the early death of her husband, the loss of her children. She writes this beautiful quote from St. Elizabeth. The accidents of life separate us from our dearest friends, but let us not despair. God is like a looking glass in which souls see each other. The more we are united to him by love, the nearer we are to those who belong to him. A looking glass, not a veil. No, I can see straight through, clear through. When I'm close to our Lord and in his love, I see more clearly the reality that I'm not far from my loved ones. They are not far from me. One more quote from St. Elizabeth. We must often draw the comparison between time and eternity. This is the remedy of all our troubles. How small will the present moment appear when we enter that great ocean? Right, right. A woman who knew so much loss never says, I wish they were back here in this brief moment. I wish I was there in that eternal moment. Her heart leapt towards, towards that, that timelessness that, that is so like, wow, they just flew by on the other side of that wardrobe. Right, right. How small will the present moment appear when we enter that great ocean? And that's our hope tonight, that our loved ones are, are welcomed and, and, and in that great embrace of our, our Heavenly Father, and our prayers will strengthen them, and they are praying back for, for us. And, and the one thing that does it for us is that death of Christ, symbolized by the candle which we lit at the Easter Vigil. In the darkness outside, this candle was lit, giving us that hope of, right, light will shine again. We're going to use that same symbol here in just a moment. A candle with each of our loved ones' names is, is being lit, and, and those who've been asked will, will be able to carry that in as the name is called out loud, and, and we're remembering again, yes, right, in this darkness, in this time that I might be moved to despair, I got Mother Seton's quotes, I got it, I'm not going to pick up a veil when I can look through the looking glass, I'm that close, a, a closeness that comes from Christ, a light that can pierce the darkness, that's my sense of hope. I will be united. I am united with my loved one now, especially because of the gift of the Eucharist. If you are the representative for your family, we'll be carrying in a candle. I invite you to the gathering space. And again, there are, our team is out there helping right now. So you probably got a little yellow sheet as you came in. It tells you, tells you uh, what to do. It's going to be a fun project to get you in alphabetical order when you're out there, all right? Given that that might be difficult to hear, uh, to, to actually line up in a political order, at least be hearing for the name of your loved one in that way. You'll be able to come in and place your can on the table.
Francis Baumgartner. Bill Belleville. James Brady. Robert Briarton. Marie Calabretta. Anthony Carbone. Kathleen Sincata. Kathleen DeStefano, or Carl DeStefano. Willie Dyer Sr. Adeline Fagan. Jim Finnegan. Elizabeth Furch. Beth Gilchrist. Catherine Godswin. Jean Ganyu. Margaret Fitzgibbons. Gutstein, Jazz Grovine, Donald Grovine Sr., Claudia Gurek, Lauren Janola, Theodore Kaminsky. Francis Cardos, Beth Kemp City, Jim Kemp City, Amelia Kinsey, Audrey Carroll, Patricia Lynn Worsick. Michael Lemire, Jacqueline Lemire, Diane Long, William Lucille, Alice Linick, Anna Rita McLean. James McKay, Marilyn Miller, Jean Moynihan, James Palladino, Joan Patterson, Rose Pavone, Daniel Phelan, Nancy Reeves, Ruben Rico, Thomas Ryan, Irene Saucier, Robert Saucier. Sharon Sheedy, Robert J. Salazzo, Patricia Steffen, Robert Turner, Teresa Vassilov, 
Griffin Wilsey, Josie Wolski. One was to hold Jesus himself as he passed through this world. It was the one that St. Elizabeth Ann Seton found comfort in. That's the arms of the Blessed Mother. As we've brought up the candles of our loved ones and our family members, maybe as a closing prayer upon this presentation, we could pray the Hail Mary. Hail Hail Mary. you to stand together as we bring our petitions, our needs before our God. <coughs> Obviously acutely aware of the love for those who have gone before us, but recognizing there are many needs in our world still today. We make our petitions known to God this evening. For our growth and holiness among all church members, we pray to the Lord. For an increase of wisdom and courage for world and business leaders, we pray to the Lord. For reconciliation in broken relationships and peace in war-torn areas of the world, we pray to the Lord. For the sick of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Parish, that they may be strengthened by God's mercy and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For the souls of our dearly departed family members, may they rest in the peace of the kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Lord God, we bring to you tonight, with both heavy hearts but hopeful of immortality, the loved ones whom we carry and who have carried us earlier in our life. We ask you to hold them forever in your arms. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. With your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. With your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. I invite you to stand together and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servants may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, who lives and reigns forever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Elizabeth and C, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this light, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O 
God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now I share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. give a couple of words for communion instructions if you haven't been here yet or in a while. Um, you can see there's kind of arrows that help direct each, each section. So I'll be in the center aisle, and, and this group will come through from the side aisle, returning by the side, all the way down this section. You know, in fact, you can be seated for a minute. It might be easier for everybody to be seated for a second. So we'll go all the way through the section, coming down the center aisle. Once they've finished, your section comes next, going this way. Right. Deacon Bill will be right here by the, by the presider's chair in your group. Let me come up this way is what the arrow shows you, right? So return by the ramp. Nope, I got it wrong. You guys are coming this way. That allows you to go by the wall and return that way. Uh, so Gene will be uh, right here, allowing this group to go first, then you guys will go out by the wall. And that makes us a one-way return, a little less traffic stepping, so the mayor will be right there for your section. Thanks for your patience.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your departed servants, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Depending on the time of year you lost your loved ones, some of you may have been able to, to gather and then have a funeral luncheon here. Many of you were not able to because of our, our limit on gathering. Well, let me tell you, the funeral luncheon committee felt like this night couldn't end with just a sad, we can't be together, walk out the door. Did you see the cookies as you came in? You've been thinking about them the whole time, right? Really grateful, really grateful to the people of our parish for the music they provide, the, the work to make tonight happen, the, the, the consolation that's there at the moment of, of the funeral that meant so much to you. And, and they want you to kind of feel that love in, in the cookies. So we, we can't hang out and, and, and spend time here because of distancing. But please, don't walk out. I can't eat all of them, all right? So <laughs> grab some cookies and feel the love. Feel the love of our parish trying to strengthen you as you continue your journey and as we uh, continue to keep our, our, our love, your loved ones in our prayers. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. and then they're going to do verse 2. The candles are, please take the candles of your loved one's name with you when you go. All right. <laughs>